My name is Maria Nyambane Waweru. I am a mom of two, a wife to Nahashon Waweru. Um, I'm also an author of two books, Love the Original You and Marriage is a Scam. I am a chief editor of the kids mag a kids magazine called The Young Magazine. That is a kids magazine available in Kenya. And um, I'm happy. I'm a happy woman. I'm very free. I love life and uh, swimming. I'm Nahashan Goge. Waweru, born of a boy and Goge and married to Maria. And uh, I'm a member of the cross. I follow the cross so much. I'm a Christian. I'm saved in short. And uh, I'm a fan of football. And uh, I'm a publisher. I publish books. I'm a computer scientist. And I do computer business or any other business as long as it's legal. I would describe my wife as the best thing I've ever gotten in life. Somebody who came to, I, I, I can say it's the, the other part of me which was missing to make me complete. She's everything I could have asked for. And uh, I never regret, I've never regretted even for a moment eh, being with her. Sometimes she's annoying, sometimes she's fine, but that's what I was looking for. The best thing I can ever ask for, that was her. If I'm given a chance to choose again, I'll choose her, I'll choose her again. I would describe my husband as, uh, let me start by saying, the most unknowing and the loudest person I've ever met. But also the one person that I know, if I have a dream, it, it belongs to him to push. If I have anything I want in life, he's the only person that I know who can make it happen. I also describe him as the most playful father that I've seen to my children and uh, a person who tries to cook, but he doesn't do so well, but we enjoy his food. I first saw him when I was in high school form one. Yeah, we, uh, he, we didn't know each other. The entire four years of my high school, he did not know me, which is weird because the entire school knew him. He was a teacher's pet, to say the least. He was in form five at that time. Then after I finished his form four, when I was in form two, he came back to start and started teaching the school. I hated him, to say the least. Like the name Nashon being mentioned on assembly, in class, and the teachers really kind of made him look like a big deal in education part of life, uh, which makes me proud of myself because I And then, uh, so after that, after we've done with our form four, I went to Facebook one day and there was this site called Poetry Soup. Since that I write a lot, I saw that he publishes his poems there too. So I kind of inboxed him, like, how do you publish your poems there? That was on 28th of December, 2015. Then I texted him and I was like, I need to know where you publish your poems. Then he told, he told me where the, how the poems are published. Then he's like, can we meet? Like, he was so straight. I thought that we were meeting to discuss how we are going to publish the poem. So I tell him, tomorrow is my birthday. And he didn't talk to me until 30th. 30th, I told him yesterday was my birthday. Then he told him, he asked me, are we still meeting? Then I'm like, we're meeting because it was my birthday. Huh? We met on 30, 31st of December that day. He told me to come to Amboseli. In my head, I know Amboseli is a hotel. I didn't know Amboseli is Kawangware. I was against going to his house, to men's house before anything. Like I had this principle, but he fooled me and I went to his house. Luckily, he was so respectful and uh, I would say from there, we discussed business on day one, not love. And uh, I went home knowing that I found a friend. One thing led to the other. I really don't know up to now how I'm married to him. I'm a poet. So I started poetry when I got a heartbreak from a certain radio and I wrote a poem called My Love. I was not writing to that radio in the first place. So there was no, I didn't even know her at that time. That was back in 2014. So when I came to Nairobi, I continued with poem. I continued with poetry, so I used to publish my poems. So when she inboxed me in Facebook, I thought it was another read who I used to eye sometimes back. Even the names were the same. So even when we planned to meet, I was going to meet another lady. So when she appeared, I was like, I could see where 
but but you say I could not have told her direct. Kuba siwe ni kwa ni napata. But I said it's okay, it's okay. I won't embarrass her. So uh, let me take her to to let me take her to the to the house where I used to live, the casino room. We used to live three guys. Let's go to the casino room. The other guys in night were exile. So the other guys were away. The, one of the guys used to work during the the night. So that time I could pay sugar. The other guy used to work during the day. And now me. So there were some fruits. Nakakura, and we discussed a lot. I feared her. Her grammar language was top notch. And me from somewhere in Moranga, my English and my Kikuyu, so it was in a Kibizana, which is better. So we talked a lot, and uh, personally, I didn't know how or where to start. So we walked all the way to almost the town. And then we were discussing business, the life careers, what not, what do you want in life. And then, because it was that first, I was going to Akesha, back in Moranga. So I didn't know Nairobi town. So I knew I'd get lost. And because she's born in Nairobi, I couldn't have told her in Tampereka stage, because I don't know where the stage is. So I tried to make it a bit romantic and come out. You see, generally, men take girls to stage. But today, I want you first, you take me to the stage, and then you sort yourself out. She didn't know I'd call her Shaji Akweda home. So, and that's how we started talking in now. And one thing led to another. That was on 31st deck, 2015. She started complaining about her birthday. You know, I told you about my birthday, it was on 27th. You didn't give me give me a gift. How can I give, give you a gift that I didn't know you? So, 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 so and that was it. That, in short, that's how we met. It was, a, I, don't, I don't know how I can describe it, but uh, we met through poetry. She carried my poetry book, the poetry manual, had a good number of poems. Until today, Hai Jawa do the poems are still there online poems by Google, you can get them. They are there. Yeah. So I think that's generally how we met. It remains to be a mystery to us and even uh, the students, even the teachers who knew us. It remains to be a mystery. But all of them keep saying, you knew this girl in school. Realistically, I didn't know her, and uh, that's how it is. And then you see, personally, I love the, you know, I love the Arrieros, eh? the, 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 you know, the brown, eh? the Arrieros. So I said, I didn't know it would lead to. I didn't know it would lead to. Black Dio Imeiva. I didn't know it would lead to Black Dio Imeiva. Honestly, he was not the one. I'm not going to lie that he was the one. Everything about him I did not like. From his dressing, the way he talked, the way he reasoned. Like, he was not the one at all. Uh, actually, I remember when someone would suspect that I'm dating him, I would deny fully, 100%. Uh, even up to our dowry, there's a... My, actually, there's a boyfriend I was dating when he was paying the dowry. I told him it was acting. May I be forgiven? <laughs> so, I did not know he was. I wasn't sure about him from the beginning. But then again, when I when now we started working together, and then I got to know him slowly, I realized he's at working, a quality that I admire. I also saw how much he can do anything for me. Like, it's really hard to find someone who can do anything for you. And I started testing him, actually, because I was like, okay, he's not my type. But let me start testing. I started testing, I love this, I want this, and he would go all out for me. That alone was very, very touching to me. And the fact that when I had something to do, he would be there to support and to push. That is not something you see in a boyfriend. So that is what made him stand out among every other guy that I've ever dated. She was not the one, eh? I won't try. She was not the one. She was a far much ahead of me in terms of exposure and then there was the notion of Usiwe yomstia na Nairobi. So by the virtue that she was Nairobi, that was automatically out. And then there was the issue of uh, the way I present myself from my village. Eh? It was not the best thing for me to have a girl from town. But as we started moving around, my point was zako. that was it. But I was not so serious to her the previous breakup, not breakup, I left somebody to go to her because somebody decided not to eat my money. So I heard about, I invited somebody for lunch, Akakuja, Akakura, Miyabiri, and I felt like, ah, no, 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 kazi juzi na no, 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 so it started from there, so I got her a camera. I, she told me I want a computer, I got her a computer. You know I usually count how much you ate for me, you ate 200,000. What when I complain, So she ate, <laughs> she ate about 200. She ate about 200. So to me, 
once we started moving, she started pushing me to higher levels. Eh? Her demands became, her demands started become big. And because my point was, I prefer even you better than I met you. Such that even if you you to touch Anna, utaumia. Because you lack something which used to come. So I kept working so hard and later on I realized she's pushing, she's pushing me to be the best I can. In my job press, it reached a press where there were issues. For some months I was not paid, so I wanted to quit. And she kept telling me, do this, go to job tomorrow. Don't, or the other job. You know, I held on until for me kajipa. So I knew, kube umtu anataka kuni push. There is a story, there's one thing she did and uh, I, I don't think very many people could have stood with that. Eh? There was a time I had about one or three thousand somewhere. She was able to get my ATM. She withdrew a hundred G. Kaput. So, unajuu taluku wana kichwa that time. I wanted to realize that the money went to buy a prot. And then she told me that, iyo tripu kutuko nanda na two weeks, jipage na three thousand. Ujue venye utada na venye utaludi. It's none of my business. So, I was so minded, but I saw the results and I see. Kube uni msaya nataka, ni move poa. Uni msaya na ni sukuma. So I found out I from up in Ajipa, and then I realized there were some guys when you are going to Mkatia. So the first thing was to move from uh, Kawagoa to Ravington. Eh? Ukuta, you know, I was saying you Ukuta, Ravington in Kawagoa. So even that's why it sounds like a hotel. You move from Lower Ravington to more. See, so the problem was the costs increased, fare increased, rent. Now, now I'm paying full rent alone. Furniture, what the co- the cost became hard, and the company I had, Ikaisha. Nairobi can eat a kamkutano. You can be a kijana rachi. You can eat a dika viboko proper. But you say I have to sustain her. So the lifestyle I showed her from the beginning, we have to maintain it. So ni kada kuuza avocado mudrua. So I wake up at three. Na idea guni avocado. Na agusha umo. Then na pada job apa hili. So it was as simple as that. So that I can try to maintain her lifestyle. But that one taught me how to work hard, even no matter what type of situation. Because I have to give her what she needs. And I think since we met, her hairstyle has been mine. Saron has been mine ever since. For the past almost eight years. Yeah. I had to maintain that. Ni unajua the mamu nakaa the more lifestyle in Andrea Kupanda. Kama mulikuwa munakura kwa kibada sasa ranch, hataki kwa kibada tena. So inabidi sasa utia kabidi kidogo. So I realized that she's pushing me too far to do the best I can do for myself. So then at around, uh, that was 2016. Now 2016, I now got to meet the parents. I now got to meet the parents. Not at home, in church. So I was in church and I was in church. I was in You know, my interest is not the product, I want to know the source. So I was in church and I was in a box. Hata I was in church and I was in church. So And then uh, the dad didn't know me. The dad is the pastor. The dad didn't know me. So she introduced me to her home on December. Which, which date was it? 6th December. 6th December. So 6th December, I was in the house. I was in the house. I was in the house. I was So I was introduced. She's my friend. And I was shopping. At that time, shopping was 2000. That manager was in the market. So I was introduced. And the dad was happy. The parents were welcoming. Her birthday was 29. So instead of planning a bash, I planned like Maobia Kanisa. So what we church yao waka come. Some of my sisters waka come. Some of my best zagu a job was chana. We just say you have to come. So you can come a service ya church ko a home, but in bad day. You see you only kijana wa church. No, I'm saved. So at that time I was still kijana wa church. So that was it. So from there, I had not I had not even proposed at that time. Then I had there were other two competitors in the market. Two guys who are competitors in the market. They were well loaded. So I knew. Mimi na kuuza avocado zangu na Kenya nina hasa na huko nje somebody can buy it within a day one of them I know I think was a doctor and nilikuwa ninawajua hata kama huko umeniambia so I decided to propose in January 2017 
I said I love you first. That was wrong. So I felt like I said I love you first. Uh, he came home. My, my mom is the one who made the coming home more easy. Because after he saw him in church, my mom saw him in church and then she was like, Karibu nyumbani. In my head, I'm like, she, this guy is not my boyfriend. He's not my type. I don't want him to come home. But mom, after saying that, one week later, mom is like, Babako, unajua alisikia, rafiki yako alikuwa kanisani, hasa anataka tu kumjua. I'm like, mom, hakuna mali tunaenda. Then she's like, ninaelewa, lakini unajua hata tunataka kujua marafiki zako, Wote, yotu kutu na juu kwa wapi nukona nani. So, I thought it was a friendly. Then the guy akakuwa kuja kama overachiever. Hey, Kuna the guy was an overachiever on that day. So on coming, the topics, everything that he was presenting himself was good. So I was like, I said I love you first. Now he's home. Now, I want him to do something now. Telling himself. I kind of acted up after I had said I loved you. Then he redeemed himself in a way. Like he started showing me now. He knows what he's doing, and that is where now I guess the feeling grew. On 17 January, one day a friend of his calls me, and then she's like, I missed your birthday. You remember he had hosted a birthday on 29th? I missed your birthday, and I uh, want us to have coffee in uh, town. So this friend is a colleague to him also. So I decided, okay, there's no harm for me going. And yes, it's true. She is the only friend who missed the birthday. So this can't be a lie. Oh, you knew the friends. And I knew all the friends that had attended. So I knew that office had this number of ladies, but this specific one had missed the birthday. Sama kutafuta venue. I looked for the venue. And I'm almost giving up. Like calls after calls, kuja, siamini I can get lost in town. Finally, I go to the venue, and then I go there, I find all, the, all his colleagues are seated there. And now since we've developed some sort of relationship, we are friends, so it's comfortable. I'm seated, we are having milkshake, then I was told order some. They were having milkshake, and then they told me to order. I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm shy. I don't know what to order because I'm not a fan of milkshake. So I'm just seated. Nothing. What can you have? I'll just have juice. Like, no story. Deep down, I'm like, why would they call me? Why would she call me when they are here? And I'm shy. Like I thought it was coffee between the two of us, but I didn't tell myself a thing. So all of a sudden, a guy walks in, a stranger, gives me papers, written notes. Okay, that was the sweetest thing that I've ever experienced. Like, the notes were saying, this is the sweetest girl, I love you since I met you. And, and then I'm like, shocked, who is this? And I don't know how to hold my cool, I yelled, who is this now? <laughs> then they're like, I, it's like you have a secret admirer, that's what they said. The next thing I know, I turn while I'm reading and then he's on his knee. And yeah, to me that was a romantic thing at that time until he told me the story. You see, I was not proposed. Originally, I was not proposed. Mutua Moranga Shua, Yoki, Mutua Moranga, you are almost 20 something years, you propose, you propose, Nini. So you know, 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 so now, so one of the one of our best friends until today, he hinted to me, you know, there is a certain guy, alikuwa dhika, anataka kukuja kuwa na wazazi. Na ruku, nisha fanya bathili, na nisha nunulia mtu tablet, na nisha ida na shopping kwao. Pesa yago hezi potea. <laughs> so, so I did, literally I didn't have anything. I won't try for proposal. So I went to the office and I told one of the ladies called Sadra. Sadra, yes, I want to, you know, my girl, yes, I want to propose. And then they were happy. Scarlet told her, So now, can you organize it now? When? I told them. I think after two weeks. No, you have to do it today. So, you see, <laughs> so, you have just told them at 10, and they are telling you you have to do it today. So, oh, how do you work? And then don't forget, how do plan? So now they told me, now, good, today we'll organize the venue for you, everything for you, we'll organize. The only thing you do, you'll pay. Get money from where? So I told them, it's okay, no, no problem. Me na peda kujituma sana. So at, they told me now, can we do it in downtown? Then they said, no, downtown has a lot of people. And it's too noisy. Let's do it at uptown. So I said, it's okay. Even me, I didn't know the venue. I didn't even know the hotel. So I told them, I'll come to the hotel, then I see, and then we'll plan it. Now they told me, no, to tell you, I told them, it's okay. So I told them, it's okay. So I went and saw the hotel. Then I called all my colleagues who we used to go to church with, he's still in Nairobi. So I told him, you know what, Francis, yes, I'm proposing today. 
ah shit tu hata unajua ni mzee kutuliko tufungulie ji jia so i nikapitia city market nikachukua mawe ya 70 do you know they are just 76 10 10 10 10 76 is 70 and then i told washira haya situfanya hivi situende then washira limaiti mko na pete ah lazima mtu apropose na pete tulizurura nairobi kutafuta pete tulipata pete ya, ya 20 bob tea room so tukaenda tea room tukanunua pete ya 20 bob so if you look at the video for proposal utaona hiyo pete haija tosha remember this girl is doing video yake inatosha na aje on the first place so nikachukua pete ya bao kwanza niliuliza hiyo mtu wa tea room uko na pete akaniambia pete zenyu ziko hapa ni so nikamwambia ah mimi nataka pete ya 10 bob eh ah wewe kijana acha ni ya nini nikamwambia hapana ni pete yangu ya harusi imepotea remember the lady sadra has gone to pick her so the ladies who are left there now they are talking to me. Ujua wako karibu kufika, ujua wako karibu kufika. So kuwa within lakini msipatane. Literally wakivuka barabara na Sadra tuliwaona. I was shaking. I won't lie to you. I have never proposed. Mimi nipigie msichana magoti. Tuogee tu kweli na siku daganyana. Nimeleroa moranga hiyo miaka yote nipigie msichana magoti. That was magic. So na tukapanda kwa lift I was shaking and shivering. And then watu wameniona nibebeba maua. You know you know how they are casual. Najua ni kutupa boga points. So kapanda so they were seated somewhere around a cave kube watu wenye wako kwa hotel literally wanaona me i didn't know they are seeing and then the dj wa hotel you know there is that ka music eh ka music kashache jua i think kama yako west rifle or something i don't know who was doing all that remember nobody had planned it no hakuna mtu amesema music kube kuna mtu ameniona nikiingia na maua so i go i greet her and then the girl who is passing my ears down kneel down so and then the people kube hotel muzima imenyamaza Miss, and you say that my mind was out. So I look at her, I tell her, yes, will you marry me? And then she's confused. He kijana di pig amount, so she why did you say yes? I think you are confused too. So, <laughs> so she said yes and that was it. Now, don't forget there was no money. Do you remember the, there was no money? Yeah? When she said yes, we sat down, we talked, we chatted for like 15 minutes and then they left. I asked them about the bill, they told me they sort the bill. Their milkshake. Their milkshake. So we asked for Jamaican chicken. Yes. Jamaican chicken and something there. Don't forget. So I should have had left. And uh, there were Francis now and the other guy they have. So we were left too. So as we were speaking with her confusion, Nikaeka mkono kwa bagi yake, Nikachukua iti ya mkadi yake, Ikaka kwa mfuko yangu. So hata kikiumana, ni mimi nikwa na do. I knew the pin, ni mimi nikwa na do. So, so when it came time for payment, you know, unless you look at the ATM correctly, you cannot know whether it was or not. So niliweka tuko kusaipu na nikalipa. So she paid for her food on her proposal. I don't know how people go to Maldives to propose. It was as simple as that. And that's how she said yes. So we went to Kachukua Dabwe, uh, city in Dabwe. Eh? We took Dabwe. Akaeda kwa wana nikaeda kwa gu umo. And that was it. It was as simple as that. She got confused. After about two weeks, she felt like she can leave me. It now started dawning on her. So I talked to one of my colleagues, Jane. And it's now Jane who talked to you now to show you now it's real. It's real now. But you see, Mimi Sita, I can't do it. Don't forget, there are others rushing after her. You will be in a drama, Pia. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. So after the proposal, uh, that is when now issues started. I think before the proposal, we were just dating, but I was not dating him alone. Okay, I wasn't serious in, because I wasn't looking for marriage, and he wasn't my type clearly. So after the proposal, that's when it dawned on me. Now, okay, I'm getting married, and now we need to plan other things. Now I need to visit his place. My parents need to know that I'm, someone proposed to me. Dowry needs to happen, all those things. So uh, I went to his place, very welcoming home. I would say that, honestly, I think if I was to leave him, maybe his parents were one of the things that I wouldn't, because they were sweet and nice, and they loved me so much. So I felt so homely. And uh, after that, my parents know that I'm getting married. Now it comes to the time of the dowry. Whoa. Now before that, eh? before mm -hmm. that, eh? before you even go to dowry, eh? mm -hmm. you are girl number three or four to take home. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> no matter how many times I want to make my love life romantic, it can never be with him. It can never be. <laughs> it can never so be. You see my him. mom, eh? My mom, we are so close with my mom. So, so very much close with my mom, eh? I'm number six. At home, you are seven, and I'm number six. The last one is our daughter. So we are so close with my mom, and my mom has been in my life all through. 
same with my dad. But um, you know, as a boy child, I'm so close to mom. So anytime my mom used to hear I have a girlfriend, I had to retain you. So I had taken two ladies at home. Eh? So even when I took you, my mom was not serious. She knew probably could have you know, it's normal. So it's not normal. I'm not saying I don't know whether it's normal or not normal. But my mom wanted to to ensure that I get the best for myself. So we went home, eh? After we went home, I came to, I was invited to a church for an anniversary, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. So I was to take some cards to the church. You remember this is the second time I'm going to the church. So I was to take some Harabe cards to the church. So I printed the cards, I took them to the Harabe. And then after that, I kufika kwa church nikapata musa wa camera. I didn't mtu wa camera haku, mtu wa video. Kuna video camera lakini hayuko. So I was given kazi ya video camera. Before nifanya kazi ya video camera, mtu wa keyboard haku kam. So I was now promoted from mtu wa video camera to mtu wa keyboard. So instead ya kwenda kupeana cards, because I was to give cards na nirudi, instead ya kuchukua video, indeed ni rebo ni kuja na mtu wa video. So I have to call somebody kuja kuna kajobu kame jipa u record video. Nikajipata ni mi na cheza keyboard. So unawana, hiyo ni marapiri kukwenda church. Unawana sasa bonga points zimi ogezeka juu sasa wazazi, the parents to be wa shaji wa yu kijana nuwa kanisa hata na jua kucheza keyboard. Later on, I invited my sisters to my place in Umo. Wakam, alafu wako. You are not remembering that time. So my, it was only one sister who was to come. Unfortunately, na ishigi wa mefuatana. So when I was called from Gong, na yu mgini wakatoka Nairobi wakakam. Because she was there. So, unfortunately, nilikuwa na vijiko gapi? Only the two spoons. And then there are now, we are now four. So, because she's there, ilibidi ya toke, aende ya obe spoon kwa neighbor. At least two extra spoons, diyo zikuwe vijiko nene. So, then when she went to look for spoons, my sister, uh, my sister stood me. At least, yu ni mzuri, kulikuwa yenye tukua tunajua. Aso, nikajua, tick number two. Siya kwanza ilikuwa ya zazi. This now, tick number two. So, now, at that point, it's when now I decided, I think now, I can go to their home officially. We can start dowry now. Serious business now. Kaende, kaende. During dowry, that is when hell broke rules because I'm like, now he's coming, you know, they, there's the initial, like he came with his brother and that's it. Now there's now the coming of both families now coming together. Ah, I'll spare you the details, but we broke up on that same day. He went to town, bought himself a guitar and thought that the best thing to do after that was to dump me. <laughs> and he really did dump me. <laughs> Abruptly. Like for no good reason. And then, um, yeah, because the pressure of the dowry, he did not want to take that. So things ended and that broke me. Okay, when they were ending at that time, I was like, ah, okay, so it was to end. Because in my head, I'm still not in that space of, am I still settling down with him? But when he broke up with me, that is when I realized that, oh, these feelings were so deep. Like, I felt the way I've never felt. Remember, I'm this person who has never gone through a heartbreak all my life because I've never had that dating serious life. So now this is the first person to break my heart. Then I'm like, no, I need to talk to him. I call him, then we sit down to talk. And we talked. Uh, he had gone at that time. Then we get back together. On getting back together, I tell myself, you see the way you dumped me? Remember, I'm so childish at that time. You see the way you dumped me? I will stand you at the altar. <laughs> that was in my head at that time. But then a friend of mine betrayed me and told him, so now he started redeeming himself after that. The dowry was planned afresh, and then we had the dowry. Now the, well, now that is when now I knew I am getting married to this guy. The wedding day for me, it was, uh, I would say, great, because it's every girl's dream to have a princess wedding. Um, um, not, to, not to be bad or anything, but if I'm told to do it again, I would marry the same guy, but I would not do the same event. 
that's what I would say. I cried a lot before the wedding. I was saying goodbye to my parents. I'm the only daughter. Who's going to be there for them? Like that feeling. Uh, walking down the aisle was the most magical moment for me. Like if there's anything I've ever experienced in life that I would say made me feel the best is the day I walked down the aisle. It was magical. Like all these people are still while I walk down this path. That was everything to me. I enjoyed the vows, the food. However, I felt like um, I would have done a smaller wedding <laughs> at that time because it was so huge. I, um, I don't love huge crowds, so I was like, okay, I wish I would have done a smaller wedding, but I, everything was perfect. At the end of the day, my two parents walked me down the aisle, which is something I will always be thanking God for. And I married the man of my dreams. Yeah. So when I, when I was getting married, you know, there's advice you get. Oh, wow. That is the worst thing that happens to a woman when you're getting married. I will say that. This is the advice I got, everything, like everyone was telling me how to treat my husband. What to do, what not to do, how to live my life. But in my head, I'm like, 20% of, 50% of the things you're telling me, this man, I've, I've dated this man for close to two years, and he's against them. It was really hard for me to balance between what the society wants of me as a wife and what my husband wants of me as a wife. Because to me, you are telling me that wake up in the morning, clean and do this, make sure he's okay to go to work. And this is a man who doesn't want to leave you at home because he needs you to also work. This is a man who, to him, he wants my dreams to go up there, like he's pushing me to my level best, but they're telling me that. The same society was telling me you need to cook for him and he's the kind of guy who will call me and tell me I'm coming to cook. Like so many things that I was told about marriage, Honestly, I, I would say I only experienced 10% of them, which is love, respect, and trust. The rest of everything is what we created together, and we've created so much together that ours is more of friends and partners than the traditional husband and wife. And that is the one thing that, I, that made me feel like if people would walk into marriage open-minded, like blank, they would live more happier than if than the way they walk in with social media influence, the advice they get from everyone, their friends' marriages, how they are pulling. If they would walk in as blank as they could, they would have because if I had followed what I was told, I would have made him so miserable and wouldn't have worked. Well, my first thing is remember you are becoming the husband. You are the head of the family, and uh, it's me and my house. Starting from dowry, present yourself as a man. The first time, I took myself alone. The second time for dowry, when the first dowry failed, it became so complex, you know. That's not what we expected, it became so complex. And literally it failed and we broke up. Eh? But later on, when we first agreed with her, Iki took a push, can you first forget everybody else we push, me and you? We said yes. So then at that time, I took myself, I took myself straight around to that. And then now her dad, I took myself to her dad and I told dad, and even dad talked to me and told me, look, you are the one who is marrying my daughter. So can we talk me and you to Skizane? Regardless of the rest of the people. So the dad now started taking me, the dad took me as a son, and I took the dad as a father now. So now you have moved from the traditional dowry, traditional wherever. Now we are talking of a scenario where it's a dad talking to a son, and it's a son talking to a dad. And that's how it made things very easy it made things very easier for us to, 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 to come up. So the first thing as a man, just remember, you have, your wife is your wife and not a community wife. The community has its own set of rules and your house has its own set of rules. And also, when you talk, we dwell so much into traditions. We tend to limit so many things. And that's why the book, her first book, Love the Original You, is based on. Don't limit you so much on what other people are doing and what the tradition is saying. No, you are, it's you who is growing. You can create your own tradition from your own self. So that's one thing. So then we came to the wedding. It's not as easy as we think, but if I'm told to do the wedding again, I'll think twice, indeed. 
I literally I'll think twice. And I just do a small party, get my certificate. I'm saved, but literally, to some extent, let Pastor Akuja to Marizana your story, to cure her to 50. It's far much cheaper at time saving. So during, before the wedding, we realized to have a wedding, three weeks, about one month to wedding. So during our dowry time, eh, to share Kizana wakatu dowry, everything is okay. We may gear, we may discuss. Then you were called to Kwebu wa Marizana. But the question which was asked, and I can paraphrase it. Sasa to meigia kwa nyuba, to me agree, mukosawa. Sasa arusi nilini. Remember, there was no plan for a wedding anywhere. So mume simama hapo bere, mume uruzo arusi nilini. So before you leave there, they need an answer. So the first thing, and don't forget Dawari, we had invited seven people. Remember the first one had failed, so we are not inviting Kerede again. So we invited just seven people, my mom, my brother, some of my, si some of my brothers and sisters, not all. But now, mama jeli ni nani? Na diedea kisha gimuzima. Tunafika dawari, naona watu wameanza kutoka muranga, wegini wametoka kiabu. As having planned for seven people, now we are almost a hundred. And now these people want to get here with a wedding day, which we didn't have in mind. So, we just looked at the calendar in front of us. Wedding in the 23rd December. And that is it. Remember, you have not planned anything. So, at around end of November, it's then it hit on us. Aya! And it's one of the people who started reminding us. So now we, it started hitting on us. Wedding to Kaitini to find a budget. So we started with the committee. The funniest thing, our first wedding committee, even the bride didn't appear. I went alone. Nobody appeared for the first wedding committee. Nirika peke agu, nika discuss, na nika adika minutes. So when we went for the second wedding committee, it was for me, I mean, this is a previous meeting, which I was alone. She didn't even come the first meeting, so. I had a date. With another person, so. <laughs> so, so the, after the second week, we had the committee, and uh, we realized the budget was coming to about 600 G. Remember, you're not being paid at job. The budget is 600 G, raise it within four weeks. Now it becomes crazy. The first thing, let's cut food, let's cut what? To make a wedding, 23rd, because 25th, it's on a Sunday. 25th is on a Monday, Christmas. So to wake a Saturday, because we were shied the shags. Then to wake a Pahari Nyuma Kasarani behind the stadium, when you have to get crashed. Weh, 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 weh. So to me, Puguza Watu, I'm a Fika 150. Like in Mama Chakura, can you be a Tutapika food, dear Watu? Remember, I'm praying with the budget. Eh? During the wedding night, to the Chesa Cardinal, my boys, our budget deficit was 180,000. Now, wedding it up on your cash. Hatuna shida, bibiarusi yuko, eh, pasta yuko, eh, venue yuko, eh. we don't care about the rest. Napeta kujituma. So that morning, we called some few guys. You know, kuna hiru mtu muna utampigia ukiwa kwa stress na kusaidia. Hello, sir, yes, you see, my wedding is today, na nikona deficit ya hii ya mautuniza, nisaidia na 10G. The guy ten send, said 10G. So, going to start the wedding, we had a deficit of 110,000. So, tumepata it eh, within that period. Wacha nifike kwa wedding, nafikira ni watu wamefika. Kube ni marafiki. So, our wedding was 150 people. Brand. Nafika napata already kuna watu kama miyatatu. So nafikiria bibi ya rusi siyasha afika basi. Kube ni marafiki. Kube kuna mtu wameweka picha yetu ya rusi, wedding card kwa Facebook. So wali muote, wamekuja. Student water wa hile shule, wamekuja. Mamagu, amekuja, tumiagiri unalekuja kutoka kataga ini muranga, unalata watu 14, nisani moja. Amekuja na nisani ina. Kutoka kisi watu wamekuja na minibus. You, you know, me, you don't know where people came from. So you are planning on 50 people, already you are talking of 600 people. Now, Rusi Haijanza. So literally, I didn't walk down the aisle. Me and my best man, to repeat a two together, pale bere kuwagwazia kwa jua. Wakuja sasa, tuwagalia wala yagina wakidansi. Because whatever was sitting on my head, yeah, my waist... Yeah, my waist... Yeah, my waist... Yeah, my waist... Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Tumenunua suti, asubu hidi ya tunatest the waist, tunarealize zina tunyonga. So tunafika kwa wedding, MC na amekuja fuli. MC, MC ni fully, DJ ni fully. You know, we are trying to work with the minimum budget possible. But now, remember it was 150 people. We are not talking of 600 plus. Remember, it was minimum budget possible for 150. Now we are at 600. So budget ni kidogo, lakini watu ni wengi. MC ni tuwabia hizi vitu toe ni zinakaza primary. So literally, if you look at my wedding, sina tie. My best man, hana tie. Now, that's not the problem. Two weeks to wedding, I was, my waist size was 33. The wedding day was 27. So two weeks was enough kunikodesha to 27. So I remember uyu jamaa, uyu, 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 the pastor mwenye likuwa natushikanisha hali tufuga kitu ya, kitu ya red, haka tushikanisha kwa waist. Indidi nilimuabia kwa masikio. 
wewe uje traza itaguka <laughs> so itaza yagu itaguka the stress level was to such extent and then immediately after the wedding the service providers were mesimama hapo and hasha ni yes mc starts nilikuwa najua mtanicherewesha pesa yangu namwambia please usiwole mama wa chakula alikuwa ameona kwa ubali she is a very wise woman alikuwa ameona kwa ubali watu watakuwa wengi she was there and she was the one who was serving so nobody lacked food water was enough kuna mtu alikuwa ametupa maji free the person who gave us the who was doing the photography alikuwa ametupa maji free which was enough for everybody and then the mc made dancing proper it was more of a concert rather than a wedding so after the wedding sa moja usiku service providers wamesimama hapo wanataka do so mimi narusha mkono kwa mfuko si unajua kuna bahasa zingine nilipona mkono narusha kwa mfuko narusha mkono na fukua bahasa nakuta ni bahasa iko ndani ya bahasa haina kitu so my best man akaniambia ingia kwa gari tuende <laughs> so only to kwenda kufugua kwenye tunaenda kufungulia bahasa remember we had a deficit of 1000 eh? tunafugua bahasa tunapata ni only 27000 and this 27000 it's from chama nilikuwa nayo ya wanaume wametoa 10000 so all 600 people wametoa less than 17000 service providers wana stari kulipo lakini si tumemaliza wedding na tumetoka si shauri yao so the following day i had to call them so we went for honeymoon i had paid honeymoon in area in advance eh? and then mwenda na ndega murudi na basi so ugetupata tukizurura maridi tukitafuta basi chip ya kurudi nairobi You don't need every Tom Dick and Harry in your wedding. Indeed wedding ina kuaga imesha because you need certificate. But you need the cross people who matter to you so much. That's what you can call a wedding. But I think that's a reason I learned and uh, when you got married I realized that if you marry your best friend life becomes very simple. And marriage is not the way you are told it will be. That's why we are calling we are saying that marriage is a scam. I'm the one who published the her book and people have kept asking, "Wewe bwanako aliagiri kuandika hii kitabu?" I tell them on the one people because it's true because Most of the things we are told before you get married they tend not to be true. Nobody tells you that not all, all marriages are meant to work. Nobody tells you that. But what happens is that ukitoka kwa nyumba mzazi wako anaweza kuambia na unajua hujafukuzwa hapa. So mgu moja ikiwa huko hiyo mgu mwingine iko nje. You go with the notion it's you who are going to create the person you want. And then there are some characters as it awaisha. Huyo mtu I had lived with my mom for 29 years. And then to my date now two years which is drama. Do you think some of the characters to change have been acting to nimekuwa nikiyak ndio zikae kama ziko sawa but realistically I'll go back to default so if if you came with crossed mind mwenye ulikuwa una date ndio unaenda kuwa wale wako utaitana that one will survive and you see I keep telling people that after the research when you are doing the book marriages has come marriage is divided into three segments the first three years the next seven years and the rest of the lifetime if you survive the first three years that drama that honeymoon there is nothing new and everything is sweet Goja sasa we give after three years watoto anza ku come budget zianza kupada school fees zianza kukuja if you can sustain that seven years wherever we are now if you can sustain those seven years now after those seven years chances of breakup chances of divorce are very low first realize that you are going in as you put the family away put the friends away now it's you to make your own family and your own village venye ile pesa ulikuwa unapewa wakati wa kudate saa hii So anyway, <laughs> because right now you are working with budgets. Two, you da bibi, you da msichana ulikuwa nakatia huko mnampea do that time. Saini bibi yako. She is the manager of the finance. So, and then don't go with this notion of I'm I'm, I'm handy, I'm a man. I've married a helper. You know that's what you talk even from the Bible of married a helper. Siwezi pika, siwezi fua all kazi ni yako. Then you should pay her for doing that then. That's my thought. So, sometimes personally I love cooking. My mom taught me how to cook. So how should I not cook? Let me tell you kitu furani hupikaji vizuri so let me cook for let me cook it because it's comfortable when i cook it why not mama kuna shida so another thing that has made our marriage going our two handsome boys oh wow when they came like life just became more interesting like seeing that family time made it more interesting also the fact that we work together i think even if we say that we are not going to spend time together work will force so for us i think we are privileged to have gotten that chance of no matter what you do like we have a meeting somewhere we work together so i am not going to get a cab you can drive me there so we'll always be together Also we intentionalize some things. I love breakfast date. I hate dinner dates. Sorry, I never told you. I hate dinner dates so much, but I love breakfast dates. So I tend to try find a way to fix them inside. 
um, like I try my best to look for what I love and incorporate it, him in it. He's tried to make me love football, I can't hate it. Those small fights have made this marriage at least get to a point whereby we know each other enough to know which lines not to cross. I, I think another thing which have kept us together, our social media, right, the YouTube and the Facebook channel, we do give a lot of advices on, uh, on a relationship, especially for the young couples. Eh? And for us, we try as much as possible for us to be the best so that we can give the best examples to people. And we try as much as possible to be real. That's why most of the times we build on Facebook Live instead of recorded YouTube videos. Eh? Such that, in case to kosana in between live, munajua ni kweli watu huko sana. And that reality is what has kept us going. As a man, there are some things you don't expect your wife to buy for herself. If you are a man and other men tell your wife, your hair looks cute and you didn't pay for it, you are failing as a man. That's what I believe in. So I think if you play your role, by playing your role, her playing her role as a wife, me playing as a role of a man, and being as real as we can be has kept us going.